All right, in this video, we're going to follow through with a full OCTC calculation. So here we have a common source amplifier, and we need to find all the different small capacitors that we're going to analyze for this one. So we know that we have a capacitor from the gate to source, CGS, and a capacitor from the gate to drain, CGD. And if we're in an integrated circuit technology, we also have a capacitor C source the bulk and a capacitor C drain to bulk. Now we know for this analysis that C source the bulk is grounded on both sides. So in general, we can neglect it. Now we're going to find the tau for all capacitor for all the capacitors, but first we're going to start with CGS. So we need to make an equivalent circuit. All right, following the principles that we discussed before, we're going to short voltage sources and large capacitors. And that means that our circuit for CGS looks something like this. We're going to place the capacitor CGS with a test voltage source, measure the current that flows through it. We would indeed find Vx over Ix, which is equal to S of I is equal to Rs parallel with Rg. And we could say that tau CGS is equal to CGS times Rs in parallel with Rg. Next, we're going to move on to CGD. Now, I'll note that sometimes we're going to need a small signal model, and this is one case. So here, we're going to analyze the capacitance between the gate and drain. So we put a test voltage source and again, measure the current that flows through it. In this case, we need the small signal model because we have two nodes that we have to analyze. And in order to do this, we need KCL at both of those nodes. Now, I'm not going to do the KC analysis on the video, but uh, after the KC analysis, we would end up with an expression like the following. We have RS in parallel with RG plus R out in parallel with RD plus GM times RS parallel with RG times R out parallel with RD. This is equal to, we'll call it RCGD. Now tau for this CGD is then just equal to CGD times the resistance we just found, RCGD. Lastly, we need to find tau for CDD. So again, we'll look at the equivalent circuit. We have RD, and then we have to replace the capacitance CDB just measure the current flowing through it. Here we have Vx over Ix is equal to Rd in parallel with Rho of the device. We can write tau CdB is equal to CdB times Rd in parallel with Rho. Now, we need to sum the taus and find the high frequency pole. So, our high frequency pole would be 1 divided by tau CGS plus tau CGD plus tau CDD. And if we were looking at what our frequency response looked like, we haven't found what the low frequency response looks like. The mid band response we would find by inspection analysis. And then we just found that high frequency roll off starts at omega h and rolls off at minus 20 dBs per decade. Okay, for every amplifier we look at, look at it's going to be a, a fairly simple procedure. We need to identify all of the small capacitors in the circuit, find the driving point resistances that those capacitors see, 
sum their time constants and then take the inverse of the sum of the time constants in order to find the high frequency pole. And that is the open circuit time constant method. Now in the last video, we're going to look at a method that will ease in finding the time constant for that particular capacitor, the CGD capacitor. And also we'd find that we, uh, we'd have a similar problem finding the response for the C mu capacitor uh, in a certain circuits. So we'll see how to handle that in the next video.